Hey friends, Ash here with Chin Sense. Hope you're doing really well. Back outside again. It's starting to slowly heat back up, so I decided to get outside and catch some fresh air and shoot a quick video for you guys. Today's video is a little bit more casual than usual as far as most fragrance reviews go. I'm taking a look at this one right here, Mr. Burberry Element. Oh boy, so much hype behind this one. I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to say that the Mr. Burberry line is one of the least hyped, least talked about, versatile blue fragrance lines that has ever existed. The original Mr. Burberry was made by Francis Kirkshawn. And when that was announced, people were like, oh my God, it's gonna be great. Then it came out and nobody cared. And then they had Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum and nobody cared again. But then they actually released Mr. Burberry Indigo and uh, nobody cared a third time. But then they, <laughs> you, you get the picture. This one is not done by Francis Kirkshawn. It is done by Jerome de Marino, who Francis Kirkshawn is the mentor of. So it seems like he handed the line off. Let's go ahead and just jump into this and roll the little intro thingy. I'll show you guys the presentation. I'll break down the fragrance and we'll talk more about Mr. Burberry. Let's go ahead and check out this presentation. You've got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration, all right there on the front, on the top. You've got the name of the house, nothing doing on the sides. On the back, you have your ingredients. On the bottom, you've got your batch code and your barcode. Batch code here, 0030. And here is your bottle. Same as all the other Mr. Burberry bottles. This one, a small 50 mil. I actually got this from the Burberry website. They don't have 100 mils on the website. They say that they no longer carry them and you can find them in stores like authorized Burberry retailers. So that's pretty cool <laughs> that they don't even care to have 100 mils available on their website. So it's either 50 or 150. Anyway, you got the name of the house, name of the fragrance right there on the front. You got the little bow tie and on the top, you got the name of the house once again. On the bottom, you have your sticker and your badge code. And I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys. Let me get a handy dandy tester strip. So here we go. Let's give it a spray or two. Don't know if you can see that, probably not, but the atomizer is actually pretty good. So as I was saying before, the Mr. Burberry line, not super well thought of. You can find them in TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Ross's all across America pretty often. They're heavily discounted at Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, and all stores of that ilk. And by that, I mean discounters. Don't know why I didn't just say discounters. But Mr. Burberry Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum and Indigo for that matter are all really versatile, easy to wear fragrances. And for the price you can get them at are actually pretty solid. This one I covered on This Week in Fragrance back in 2020 as an upcoming new release. And then I forgot about it, didn't see it again. Didn't see it at Fragrance X, didn't see it at Fragrance Net, didn't see anybody talk about it, didn't see anybody review it. Go to Fragrantica, there's like three or four reviews on there maybe. Essentially, this came out and died. And as I mentioned before, that is obvious when you go to the Burberry website and they just tell you, hey man, we don't have any 100 mils, check a store or something, I don't care, whatever. It's a really strange thing. Burberry is not a really small house. People know about it. People will pay out the years for their clothing, their coats, all of their accessories. And yet, fragrance-wise, nobody cares. So this one, does this one change things up? Does it make Burberry, Mr. Burberry exciting again? Is it gonna make people go, oh my God, I can't wait for the new Mr. Burberry. It's gonna be a stunner, I can tell you. Uh, mm, uh. <laughs> I guess let's just, let's get into the fragrance. It smells similar to another really popular fragrance out there. Yeah, that one. Invictus, <laughs> Invictus, again, again. This is something I've talked about a lot on this channel. Invictus apparently is just so popular that you can find Invictus DNA in countless releases nowadays. It seems like Invictus sells so well for Paco Rabanne 
that all these other designer houses will go to perfumers and say, hey, we want an Invictus type of scent, but give it a twist. And that's what happens. And so you'll see it over and over and over again. And I could go through probably a dozen different fragrances right now that have that Invictus DNA or style in it. And if you've spent any time reading about a lot of new releases, no doubt you have seen people talk about Invictus style scents. And uh, this is another one. That being said though, that's not an automatic disqualifier. It doesn't automatically make Mr. Burberry elements suck. So let's talk about this one and see if maybe it's worth checking out. The top here is really simple, almond. That is the top note, almond. Depending on where you look, it'll be bitter almond or green almond, but almond. Now, do you get a whole bunch of almond in this fragrance when you spray it on? A little bit, not a whole bunch, but a little bit. It gives you this, this little slight creaminess, less so than in the low medial line. The almond is much more pronounced there. Here, it's just this, this really slight almondy note. And yes, it is on the green side of things to me, not the bitter side. And you also have juniper in here. So it's gonna give you this fizzy, punchy opening. Does have a bit of that bubblegum type sweetness that you find in Invictus, but actually not as much as in Invictus. It's not quite as aggressive, not quite as in your face. This one does lean more toward like a slightly minerally, a little bit green sort of vibe. Like if you took Invictus and made it slightly green, kind of like that, and also reined in that sweetness. There are no citrus notes officially in the fragrance, at least that I'm aware of, but it does have a bit of a citrus feel in the opening. Uh, at times it comes across, especially off paper, a little bit like lemon, uh, but officially no citrus. Do I smell citrus though? Yeah. And part of that Invictus vibe that you get here is gonna be from the ambergris in the fragrance, the ambergris accord. The way that it's used in Mr. Burberry Element, really similar to how it's used in Invictus. So if you like the way the ambergris is used in Invictus, that little bit of fuzzy warmth, that bit of sweetness that carries on into the dry down, if you like that, then you'll probably like this as well because that's how the ambergris comes across in Burberry Element, really similar. There's also oak moss in the base of the fragrance, though I never really pick anything up that smells like oak moss. And while Mr. Burberry Element is not really unique because it is a play on Invictus, it's taking a, a page from that playbook. It's actually pretty nice. I'm not a big fan of Invictus. I've said that a whole bunch on here. It's that bubblegummy sweetness, that aggressiveness off the top. I'm not a big fan, but this reins it in a little bit, smooths it out, gives it a mineral edge, gives it a green touch, and I like it. It's better than Invictus, in my opinion. It's not original at all. It's not anything really creative, but it's nicer. <laughs> An Invictus. It's like a more wearable for me, Invictus. Maybe for somebody younger who wants that aggressiveness, who wants that loud, cloying sweetness that Invictus can have, for them, this one probably wouldn't appeal as much. But if you want something that has that appeal, that versatility, that compliment factor, but done maybe in a slightly more mature way, then this one is worth checking out. Now, all that being said, I don't think you should pay retail for it. Not because it smells bad, because it doesn't. Really appealing, really easy to wear, all the stuff I've already talked about, but because these fragrances, the Mr. Burberry line, are discounted heavily, like I mentioned before. And even though this has not hit discounters yet, you gotta think, you gotta feel like, eventually it will, right? Eventually. Been out, I think, for close to a year now, it still hasn't hit. And I think it's just because nobody cares. <laughs> They're just like, element, whatever. I don't even remember that exists. Is that even a thing? Did I dream that? And it's not even real? Oh, it is real? Oh, okay. Yes, as I mentioned, Invictacy. But of all those type of fragrances that I've smelled over the past few years, the non-Paco Rabanne Invictus style fragrances, this one is the one that I like to smell the most. Kind of weird, but Burberry ripped off Paco Rabanne pretty decently. <laughs> I guess that's how you'd say it. Talk about performance really quickly. Good, actually, really good. I went to sleep with this on, woke up eight hours later, still there, could still smell it. And I had sprayed it on a number of hours before I went to bed. 
So I mean, longevity there, 12 plus hours. I mean, more realistically, I'd probably say eight plus, but yeah, I wore it for four or five hours, went to sleep, woke up the next day, could still smell it on my hand, so. Projection, pretty solid as well. I'd say above average, not beast mode, but above average, and projects best in the first hour and a half or so. Now, that being said about the performance, there have been a couple times I've sprayed this on and then three, four hours later, went to smell it and been like, oh, oh I can't really, I can't really pick it up, but apparently it's still there. So just one of those fragrances that sometimes plays tricks on you. You think it's gone, it's actually not. In terms of when you'd wear it, daytime or nighttime, either one, maybe leans a little bit more toward daytime. It is office safe, good casual fragrance, potential date fragrance as well. Uh, formally, I'd probably wear something else. Big business situation, probably wear something else. Season wise, spring through fall, pretty comfortably. And I think that in winter you could pull it off, but you'd have to spray heavier and it's not something I would really consider personally for winter, but it's kind of close to having year round versatility. In terms of age range, it's pretty wide. Younger guys are gonna like it. Middle aged guys can pull it off. If you're older, you know, 50s, 60s, probably wearing something different, but you know what? If you like it, wear it, who cares? So there's a quick rundown of Mr. Burberry Element. I paid full retail, should you? Nah, you shouldn't. Is that because it's absolutely terrible? Surprisingly, no. But if you're looking for something unique, something different, something with artistry, something with creativity, this one's not for you because it does none of those things. This one is solely to be worn and to have people like it and potentially compliment you. So if that's what you're going after, this one will do that. And we can add Burberry officially to the list of brands who have copied Paco Rabanne's Invictus because they want some of that sweet Invictus cash flow. Unfortunately, it would appear nobody friggin' cares about this one, so it might have backfired. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. If you smell this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm gonna get out of this wind. I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there.